The Catalyst 317 Indy Elite Series has just four races to go, two road courses and two ovals. And with the monolithic Indianapolis Motor Speedway lurking in the first week of May, the intensity for positions other than the lead in the championship are heating up. And yeah, Indy may claim to be the biggest event with the biggest audience, but all it takes is some good old Texas spirit to know that everything is bigger in Texas. It's a bigger lap count too, 184 laps on the banks tonight in this Catalyst 317 Triple Crown event. Hi everybody, Kyle Heyer joined by Finney and Daguna tonight for 184 laps around TMS just outside of Fort Worth. Finney and this racetrack, this series has always put on a good show. It's been a couple of years since we've seen this combination here on Sim TV, and I cannot wait to get engines fired. Yeah, really can't wait to get these guys back going around here. A pretty decent sized fuel as well. We're currently looking at 28 cars ready to tackle the big oval here at Texas, one and a half miles. Of course, a couple changes over the years, especially the flattening of turns one and two, but I think it's going to damper anyone's speed because they're still going to push just as hard. Taking a look at the track temp, 38.9 degrees Celsius on the track, so pretty warm. Uh, they're not crazy, but a little bit more on the warmer side for these drivers. Qualifying is out in a way, and a couple drivers putting their times down. Yeah, it's, uh, as you mentioned, pretty good field size tonight. Qualifying is underway, and they don't have a lot of time to put times on the board either. Just five minutes to lay down your quick laps. And, uh, of course, this season uh, has been kind of a slaughter by Brandon Trano. Eight wins out of 11 races that he has run so far this season. So he is far and away the championship favorite. 86 points ahead of Christian Steele and Jacob Oster in the, uh, the next car back in third. But... Uh, that doesn't mean that he's going to lay back and just take it easy the next couple of weeks. I'm sure he'll be fighting hard to steal those wins. No one can catch up to him as far as the win counts, but Robert Maletschka is the only other driver to win multiple races this season. And uh, we'll see as he sits on provisional pole if he can do it again tonight. Yeah, we'll see definitely if he can do it. Currently sitting uh, solid on the top of the standings. And again, still got some quick drivers left to put some times down. Let's see if anyone can upset that balance at the top. There is Brandon Trano working his way around across the line for him in up to the top by a decent margin as well over a tenth of a second ahead Christian Seal also flying across the start finish line he's up to second place in the number two yeah that is no joke and one two three in the championship one two three in qualifying funny how that works as uh, Andrew Wood and some other uh, IES veterans are working their way around uh, this is lap number two for Andrew Wood first lap didn't count see what he's got out of turn four, that number 64. Across the stripe, Jacob Oster up to second place in the 16. And Wood, at a 24, 494, is only going to be good enough for 16th. That's a big surprise. Yeah, Craig Forsyth, you mentioned up to seventh place. AJ Musselman up to third as he rockets across the start finish line. Looking at Andrew Marquez, he's jumped up in the 36 to third. Mark Murphy across the line for him in the 69 machine. He is starting a lap. It's amazing. It's been a couple of weeks since we've done an IES race, and before that it was a couple of years, and it's just the speeds that these cars do. It is just unbelievably fast around here. Jesper Orman up to third in the number 53. Uh, Andrew Marquez down to fourth. Musselman in the 54 down to fifth. Here comes Mark Murphy, and then the only other driver out on track is Hamilton Akaboise. Akaboise yeah, actually just ahead of him. He's gone way up on the top side to Build up the speed on lap one. I think the 107 can put a pretty decent time down. Mark Murphy also looking quick at the moment with the 69. Of course, it's all on lap number two. You're just building up momentum on that first lap, and then lap number two, keeping it tidy, nice, down as close to the white line as possible. Uh oh, as Murphy has a bit of a disconnect, and I'll see if that will interrupt his time across the line for him. Ooh, I think that might have messed him up. Wow, Akaboese up to second. And Murphy did steal a 24-118, so 12th place for the 69. Akaboese, uh, just 28 thousandths off of Brandon Trano's uh, hole for now. Three drivers did not qualify, Lorenzo Bonder, Adam Blocker, and Brian Carey. Uh, we do have uh, Lorenzo Bonder on our side-by-side uh, -side tonight, so we'll get to see him. We also have uh, another driver joining us. That is uh, Paolo Vinicius. Uh, who qualified in 12th, Finian. So that'll be fun, or 10th rather. That'll be fun to watch some faces here on IES. We haven't been able to do that just yet. Yeah, glad to see a couple faces joining into the Zoom call. We're going to see a couple drivers, and as we go on for this night, I'm actually kind of surprised Adam Blocker did not qualify because he's decided to work this way from the back. He's a driver. He hasn't made a whole lot of races this season, but when he has made a lot of the races, he's consistently finished pretty much in the top five. So... Definitely keep an eye on Blocker to work his way up through the field in that 74. It can definitely be a threat. Yeah, seven starts, six top fives for Adam Blocker. Puts him 15th in the points. You mentioned the top three in the standings. Trano, Steele, Oster 
Uh, they were uh, one, two, three for a while. Uh, Robert Malechka up to fifth in the standings, and then a handful of others that we have to keep our eyes on here tonight uh, as we get into this race here at Texas. One of the big things here uh, with this being an afternoon race here, Finney, that track temperature is going to be a huge topic of discussion. Uh, the way the track is going to transition over the course of the race. Remember, we've got iRacing's new uh, oval uh, rubbering in model, I guess oval dynamic track is what I was searching for there. Over refresh. Uh, over refresh. So, you know, I don't know that I've, I haven't seen Texas race at all uh, since that over refresh. I don't know how much it will change this place, but I, I can tell you it won't do nothing. Yeah, no, Irising really has done some work to it, and I don't know if it's just the, uh, what, what, what is it called, the placebo effect? Uh, you know, just uh, anticipating that it's racing better, but what we've seen for at least the stalker side of things, the racing definitely has seemed a lot better, a lot more drivers using different lines, able to use those different lines, and for any cards are a little bit more fickle, but I think if, if that does play out, if they're, you know, where the way the track rubbers in, plays out over the course of the race, and we've got 184 laps here tonight, that's a, quite a few laps put down. Uh, if it will actually affect the racing, if so, I think the drivers will definitely enjoy that because they'd rather do that than follow a single file for these 184 laps. Yeah, tell me about Texas here a little bit because we can see down in turns one and two how wide it is and how narrow three and four is comparatively. They've knocked the banking down over there. How is that going to affect these cars? Where do you make passes around this one and a half mile racetrack? Really, so three and four, because they've been pretty much left untouched, just repaved over. Um, those are going to be the turns you're going to be going flat out through. You can carry a lot of speed through there. Turn one, one and, turns one and two, because they're a lot flatter, you're going to have to get a little lift off the throttle. However, that's probably going to be where you make your passes, ironically, because I think it's going to be coming down. You're going to build up that one and three and four, then try to get that slipstream on the front straight away, and then make that dive in turn one through. Driver really makes up moves. Now, you told me about adjusting his car, of course, in the uh, Elite Series open setups. He's got to be taking with the setups all night long. As the race goes on and to play in those conditions, you have the front, the anti roll bars, front and rear, weight jacker to play with, as well as the tire pressure. So, quite a few tools at the driver's disposal to make the car handle as good as it can, whether you're, oh. not, whether you're in the front of the pack, back of the pack, and also drivers practicing just in case. We get some great flight pit stops. Yeah, I was going to say that it was a very hot pit lane entry there by Mark Murphy. and. I like the strategy, planning out, practicing, things like that, because it's very easy to forget to do that. Uh, and every racetrack is a little different, the transition off of the banking. In a stock car, you can get away with bouncing off of the, the high banks, but maybe not so much in a low-slung IR-18. So good to see drivers practicing that. The other thing to mention is that this race is long enough as a Triple Crown event where I think we could see a bit of track transition uh, just naturally, even without the, the new dynamic track changes. I think you'll see drivers playing with that weight jacker uh, and just trying to find some long run pace and not burn their tires up. That's another critical thing uh, for these long races. Uh, but a minute and 20 left here in the warm up before we go racing here tonight. Again, just four races left on the season. And the next event on the calendar is April 7th. That's at Long Beach, California. Uh, I think it might be the next week that I'm actually going to be physically be there. I'm very excited to see that event. I've never been. Uh, Barber is the week after that, and then two weeks, three weeks after that is uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway in our uh, Indy Elite uh, Indy 500. So very excited for those next four races. Really good tracks on the calendar. Uh, as uh, warm up here is finishing up, Finian, and we're going to turn this field loose. And and these long races, you have to keep the car on the road uh, and out of your buddies to make it to the end. That's going to be the easier said than done. Again, got so many of these cars around here, almost 30 cars lined up ready to go. Going to be three wide. It's going to be a lot of action on the track. And for some of the drivers, going to have to decide whether or not they want to play hard early on. They want to let off and kind of coast around, wait till the moment to strike, carry on. Because, you know, we always say, finish first, you must first finish. Well, 15 seconds left here in warm-up before we get down to the racetrack and bring you your starting lineup. Uh, and we'll get to racing here on this very long evening of racing. And again, this is uh, going to be one of the longer races of the, the tail end of the year. The road course races will be a little bit shorter, and then we'll head to Indianapolis and run our full distance uh, 500. So very excited for that. Checkered flag here on the warm-up, and the Indy Elite Series will head down to the grid for the start of this Catalyst 317 Triple Crown event. One last look at the weather here, Finian, uh, just over 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's not as hot as it could be, but it's certainly not cool by any stretch down there as far as the track tip is concerned. Uh, so manage your stuff and make it to the end.
Yeah, it was a little bit cooler in qualifying, a little bit warmer here. It's 100, just for reference, 105 degrees Fahrenheit for those in speaking American. <laughs> Get a frame of reference. <laughs> Yes, speaking the American language. They, they do do that down here, don't they? <clears throat> All right, let's get rolling with our starting lineup here tonight. It's going to be a fun evening. Let's kick things off. Front row, it's Brandon Trano. He has been the dominant force this season. He'll start up front alongside Hamilton Akabueze in the 107 in second. Moving on back to row number two, it's going to be Jacob Oster. Line up in the 16 in third. Yes, for Orman in the 53. Line up in fourth. Fifth place, it's Andrew Marquez in the number 36. And A.J. Musselman rolls off sixth in the number 54. Back in seventh place is going to be Christian Steele in the number two. Next to him, Robert Malechka in the 91 in eighth. And Julian Altina rolls off ninth in the number 11 car. And Paula Vinicius in the number 142 starts tenth. We on back to 11th. It's going to be Joshua Chalker in the 44. Next to him, Mark Murphy in the 69 in 12th. And 13th place is Craig Forsyth in the number 99. Joe Branch rolls off 14th in the number 28. Moving on back to 15th, it's going to be Seb Alexander in the 49. Rayshawn Craig next to him in the 21 and 16. 17th place, John Christensen in the number 67. And David Adams in the double zero rolls off 18th. Andres Hyde going to be rolling off in 19th down the order in the 76. Christopher next to him in the 13 lineup in 12th. And 21st place, Dan Inch in the number 22 car. Gary Lovern, 22nd in the 98. 23rd, we meet Tony Shawan in the number 31. Next to John Silva in the number 5 and 24. 25th place, Andrew Wood in the 64. He'll be looking to move forward. So will Adam Blocker. He's only had one race finish in his seven starts outside of the top five. He'll be coming from 26 today. Very strong row, Wood and Blocker. Then Lorena at your field of 28. Brian Kerr in the 79 and Lorenzo Bonder in the 37 in 28. Again, we do have Lorenzo Bonders on board. We'll be watching him as he climbs his way through the field tonight. 184 laps. If we go flag to flag, green flag racing, it is a possibility. One hour, 13 minutes of race time tonight. If we get some yellows, expect that to adjust uh, throughout the evening. Well, as we enter the next round, of the Indy Elite Series for Catalyst 317. Uh, this is round 13. We're about to kick it off right here from Texas Motor Speedway. Green flag and we're racing in our Catalyst 317 Triple Crown event, 184 laps starting now. Just like that, a lap is done. Man, these cars are fast. Every time we race and take the green flag, I'm aware of how just incredibly rapid these things are. Orman takes the lead, but to the bottom comes the 91 Robert Malechka to turn three. Big moves early for the 91. Yeah, big dive from the bottom of the track. Going to go from fourth to second place in just a handful of corners. Big run on the back of Orman, but he's going to back off and lay in behind. Trano back now to third. Of course, it's all waiting game. So I think he's going to lay it off for a bit at the moment and take a Boster looking to his outside in the green and black car. Look at the span of cars all over the racetrack. I did not think that we would see them uh, in different grooves in turns one and two, at least in the early going. But here comes Malechka to the outside in three and four. Can he make this stick? Well, remember, for a lot of these drivers, it's a matter of searching for grip. It's a matter of searching for that cleaner. He's going to walk it past the start finish line. You can barely see him for a frame of a second. Just a blur of colors going past. Well, way up high is... Uh, that Christian Steele in the number two. He was almost rim riding up there. And that's gets pretty dangerous because of how they knock the banking down. Get yourself caught in a bad spot. Find yourself in the wall and your night's over before it starts. But managed to that hang was, on to it. Yeah, that was Andrew Marquez actually, the uh, purple oh, was it? 36 car, yes. So he's he rocketing is. around the outside looking for some grip. Gonna go a little bit high again, not as high as the number four, even and behind him is Josh McCucker as well. The outside of Christian Steele is just kept going on Gosh. the outside. It's either run off the corner he gets, and that's why drivers are looking up there. Yeah, that's interesting. We'll watch Tucker do the same thing in three and four here as well. All the while for the lead, Orman has Malechka hanging on that right rear wheel, but not able to get purchased enough to go by. Going to tuck back in behind. Orman and can try to control the lead in this race. Malechka making pokes and prods where he can. Going to try to dive Whoa. catch. Orman sleeping. Whoa! It almost gets loose as he catches the paint. Got a little bit silent and was able to save it, but that was a big dive and almost a big wreck there. Yeah, he was three. daring him down there in turns three uh, and four. 
almost came together there. It's Christian Steele again chasing up the hill. There he goes now in the two behind those two pink cars, Zach Boise and Marquez. Oh, and actually just uh, in behind them, Joshua Tucker at uh, the last lap, he made a dive middle too wide, almost took out uh, Hamilton Akaboyz. He was surprised he had to back out of it to let him on through. But uh, Joshua Tucker, big moves early on, up to six point. That's up six spot, up to fifth. A lot more mobility than I thought we would see, and here comes Malachka to the bottom now, got underneath Orman, and this time he should be able to complete the... Not quite, Orman throttles up on the exit, and it's a drag race down the back straightaway here, lap eight. Not going to give it up, still in the fight, trying to fight for that spot, and Drew will go. Robert Malachka for now. And there's the lap led for the number 91. Lap one on the day. Yeah, I'm honestly really glad that there was a lot of movement and mobility forward and backwards because I got to say, uh, after the repaved track, not as nice to race <laughs> as, as it used to be. Yeah, we'll see how the track transitions, but at least early when everyone's cars are driving well, no one's holding back anything at the moment. Orman got a great run out of turn four. Where's he going to go with it? To the middle, to the top, and Brandon Trano sizing both of them up. I don't think he even let a lap off the of pole, did he? He lost the lead by the time they got out of turn two, so he'd like to come back and take it back. Really interesting is to have the ones you guys able to carry out at turn two, even running that long way around. Despite it being flatter, they will carry a great amount of speed on the high side out of turn two. I think it's really helping them actually make some moves into turn three. Rather just in the front straightaway as you look at, yes, Roman trying to work around the outside from turn one. Just, I mean, it looks like Homestead out there. Everyone's just everywhere, which I was not anticipating. A little bit of movement in the back there. Uh, Boys, eight, Mark Murphy, and AJ Musselman and engaged in a bit of a scrap in the tail half of the top ten. Musselman in, whoop, in that uh, the yellow car there. Off into one, it goes way up high. Just trying to see again, where, where the clean air is, where the car is going to be able to grip up, not just mechanically with the tires on the track, but aerodynamically as well. May have to run high, may have to run low, may have to run low. Got to be dynamic with that. Also try to work the outside so we get past him to not blaze in the seven. Ryan Carey did not, uh, he did start this race, but came down on pit lane just a couple laps in and called it a night. Didn't see any dramas with him, but didn't last very long. Here's Mark Murphy on the outside of Andrew Marquez. That's a uh, Marquez and uh, Akaboyze have two very similar looking cars, don't they? <laughs> yeah, they really do. I mean, uh, Akaboyze, you can tell the yellow tints on his car that he can stand out identifier as you look like further behind them, or actually, in front of them. Joshua Josh and Christian Steele are battling hard for position. Steele able to get by the number two, or sorry, he able to get by the number four, four Mark Murphy Murphy's on a mission up five spots and looking for a sixth now. Going forward pretty quickly. Mark Barber, definitely a quick driver in an Indy car. It's by me really quickly out of race. <laughs> well, that could be said for a lot of people, probably. <laughs> He's able to get one more spot up to six points for him. Andrew Marquez working on the outside of Hamilton, not Boise. Not Boise, not actually making, we talked about some drivers making 12 progress. He's actually done the opposite. He's been drifting slowly back. Not sure if this is part of a plan or not to conserve his run. Andrew Marquez working on the outside, battled the uh, purple car for Magenta. Team I5G doesn't do a lot of things accidentally, but I did just see some accidents happen in turns one and two, and it's John Christensen in the wall, and I think he had another car with him. Caution is out, lap 16. He definitely was the cause of the caution, had a little bit of help. Oh! He was. That was Richard Craig if he in contact with. to turn one here. Drives in right up to the back of the 21 of Rashad Craig and that Gary Lover. No, who is that? That Dan Hench. Right? Am I going crazy? Uh, yes. No, Lorenzo. Uh, Lorenzo Bond. Yes. Oh, just a victim here. Now, he might have gotten away with damage that is uh, not insignificant but repairable. I don't think he totally destroyed the suspension in that. Yeah, well, what I'm more worried about is the David the contact with the wall. Those couldn't give me ease of repair. It's the wall that's the more concerning part. Look at it from the wall. Oh. 
three drivers with damage. First caution of the night, and everybody is on pit lane. Is this a surprise to you? No, this is not uh, taking, or can expect these guys to go about 40 laps on a tank, so about, we're almost just about halfway through the fuel line. So surprising to see them all down there and off pit lane. Machka comes out second. Actually third. Oh, second. Rock. There you go. I was, I was wondering, I was like, how are Tony Shallow get to the lead? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, he's in there near the front. Uh, it's a reset, so yeah, just for Orman, Lechka, Trino, your top three. Left hand side of the screen is your running order post pit stop here. First incident of the day between John Christensen, Lorenzo Bonder, and Rashad Crick. That'll slow things down a little bit. John Silva, I also have off track. I wonder if he had gotten some damage from something else, if there was another motivation in this. Nope, nope, you just lost connection. Oh, that is unfortunate. Well, I guess fortunate that it was under yellow because it could be a lot worse. Now, I don't know, really early in a really long race, Finney, and I think there is a possibility that you can get a couple of those laps back, so I would not give up throwing the towel that soon. No. No, definitely not. Just to uh, also point out, Brian Carey looked like he was just a start part. Okay. So he called it uh, on his own terms early on. So we are down to 25. Yeah, let's see, actually, well, 26, no John's always reconnecting, so I think he might lose the lap or two, depending on how he can get back onto the track. Take one down, pass it around. 25 IR18s on Texas. <laughs> Not how the song goes, but I figure if they were a motorsports fan, maybe it would have. You know, one thing I'm actually uh, looking interested for is because iRacing obviously announced that they are up to re updating his car, so it's getting to. 2024 specs. Um, one of those things that this car's going to go on a bit of a diet because it lose about, I think, 100 pounds. Wow. Worth the weight. Yeah, they're, they trimmed off, I, I think it's like 70 ish pounds. They tri trimmed off some weight on the aero screen. They completely changed, they changed the uh, transmission housing from titanium, I think, to magnesium, which is like, or the other way around. I'm not quite sure. But put this car on a diet because they're anticipating the, the hybrid system later this year that'll add 100 pounds. <laughs> so uh, lose 100 pounds, then gain it right back. But yeah. gain it back so probably in a different see how it's going to affect the driving of this car when it gets a little bit lighter for at least half the year. We'll see how things go. Layton with championships on the line. Green flag. And Jesper Orman brings the field here for the Catalyst 317 Indy Elite Series back underway at Texas. Rush tires and everyone's cars are getting back up to speed, 200 plus miles an hour. Now Whoa. to the back straightaway. Oh, wow. AJ Musselman all the way on the apron. It looks like for him, he just got loose out of turn two. I think it was quickie. I don't know if he had the car configured or just with full tires. But looking back up at the top of the yard, Brandon Trino, he's wasting no time looking at the outside of Robert Malechka than anyone. Yeah, again, he has, still has not led a lap yet today. I think he'd like to. Here he goes to the bottom underneath Robert Malechka into turn three. He makes that pass look easy. Everyone feels like Superman on fresh Firestones, Finian, but give it 10, 15 laps. We saw drivers begin to struggle to make passes. Yeah, whoa, almost a wreck out of, a wreck out of turn four. Big crash, Asian Musselman cartwheeling over the front straightaway. Huge crash. Oh, he's going to clip somebody. Oh, man, horrible, horrible collision. And I think, was that... Man, there was a couple of cars involved in that, but Musselman got clipped twice. That was ugly. Crash ahead of him. Rashad, was that Rashad correct? Yeah. No. no, that was Christopher in the back. Holy cow. Christopher in the back of Paulo Vinicius and then Vinicius. Musselman just a victim here. Oh, man, it just climbs it and gets tripped. Oh, and underneath him. Is that Andreas Ike that went underneath I him? I think it was. Oh, yeah, it was. Wow. That's going to be a heck of an onboard to watch. Watch this car get airborne right here. Climbs up and over, just, just gets vaulted. And Andreas Ike underneath. 
Flagman looked like he was jumping out of the way, but it was just to grab the flag. And then who comes through here and gets tagged that by... Was Lorenzo Bonner. Oh, second time tonight he's just been a victim of things out of his control. Yeah, he was able to save it. I think he might have some damage to the left rear. Dodged one, and then he was just gathering it up and gets tagged again. But let's ride on board with Andreas Hike because he is going to get a wild view. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a kill ground moment. I'll say. Oh, there goes that oh, camera. Oh, camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that might be entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, AJ's night is over. <laughs> That's what's fun about sim racing is that everybody's okay. I mean, they're okay uh, physically. Yeah. <laughs> Emotionally, probably not as much. So two cautions to start this one off. One at lap 16 and then another... On lap 20, Christensen was the uh, main driver involved in the first yellow. He is currently scored out of the race. And then AJ Musselman, uh, yes, <laughs> also out. <laughs> uh, and it looks like Brian Carey, again, a start and park there. John Silva is back on the road. Then Paulo Vinicius is on pit lane getting repairs at the moment. And uh, I think Lorenzo Bonder should be able to get back rolling again. Here's Paulo. Sitting in the box, just waiting to go. Waiting to go again. John Silva, he's also jumped back out on the track. He's four laps down, though, unfortunately. So that leaves us with 23 cars running. Potentially, if, uh, yes. depending on Lorenzo Bonder gets back out on the track. Maybe with Paulo Vinicius. Luck has just been... Not good tonight, has it? No. I mean, we always say sometimes you're the bat, sometimes you're the ball. Well, they have thrown that pitch a couple of times, haven't they? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, SimTV's got one more busy week before things get a little quieter around here. This week, we've got the season finale at Chicagoland Speedway for the Area Cup Series, Truck Series, and the Florida State Builders Area Pro Series. Uh, that is Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. At 8.40 Eastern, we've got the full send Sim Spec Miata Series coming to a close at Virginia International Raceway. That will be Tuesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern. And then Wednesday, the D.C. Region SCCA continues their uh, efforts. I don't even know where they are this week. Spa. Ah, Spa Francochamps. So that will be where the FIA F4 cars are. And that will, uh, after Thursday, we'll round out another week of racing. And then in just over two weeks... Uh, we go racing. Actually, is it just over? Just under, under two weeks. Just under two weeks. We go racing with the Toyota GR Cup North America Esports League. That will be broadcast on the Yesero Motorsports channels, uh, notably Yesero Motorsports Twitch, uh, and likely the Toyota Racing channels as well. Very excited to be a part of that. Fitting will be uh, race control. It'll be Mr. Massey. Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how you feel about calling me Michael Massey. <laughs> And, Hopefully uh, I'm not going to be like Michael Well, Massey. you know. He, I mean, he was very famous. <laughs> I don't think I wanted that kind of relationship with Toyota. Of all, of all companies. Toyota and SRO. Uh, well, you know. At least I, I hired you to blame, basically. Uh, and <laughs> then the I'll guy. be joined by Justin Prince in the booth uh, as we embark on a seven-round championship uh, imitating the real-world uh, Toyota GR Cup North America series. And Oh, and actually, before. too, if you if you want to be a part of this, you still have the chance to qualify. It's under your IRA, it's an official iRacing Time Attack event. If you live in North America, go ahead and qualify. See if you can be one of the top 40. There's some quick cookies in that series, let me tell you. Yeah, uh, there's a handful of eNASCAR drivers already in there and some of the fastest road racers uh, in the world. But if you want to give it a go, go to iRacing's Time Attack feature and qualify. you got to run Sonoma and Coda. Uh, get your fast laps in. It will total your laps, and that will be your qualifying time. Got to be in North America to participate, unfortunately. But uh, get your time qualified in. You got, what was that, until Tuesday? Tomorrow. Until tomorrow. Tomorrow's Monday. Green flag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Off they go again. A great start from the top three in particular. Brandon Trano trying to track down Jesper Orman to take that top spot away, get back onto P1. Uh, Robert Maletska led a handful of others down pit lane, by the way, so he is uh, on fresh tires again. Six laps newer than everybody else. I wonder if that'll be significant enough to get him any spots or if it'll put him in harm's way, potentially. I would think the latter, as here comes Trano up the outside here in one and two, going for the lead. Actually, didn't realize he came down pit lane. I didn't even think he would have thought of coming Snuck down away. pit lane because he got that caution so quickly after the first. I mean, there is only a minor difference, relatively minor difference. I don't think it was worth the risk, but we'll see how it plays out for him. He should try to be able to work up a little bit easier than some of the other guys back here. But for the lead, though, Brandon Trino working the outside of Orman. Into turn one they go. Now, trying to get this outer group to be just a little bit faster. Line of stern behind them, and you see Orman taking that shallow line into turn three. That's the kind of that's to play defense offensively. Just drive down into the corner a little sooner, make sure no one's going to sneak up your inside right before the turn. Oh wow! Here comes Trano to the inside. Big send down in turn one. They almost came together as Orman turned in, and Trano was there. And Orman still going to be staying on top. Trano going to look back to the outside. In behind them, battle for third place going on. Mark Murphy uh, just getting ahead of Christian Steele in the number two. Murphy up to fourth, and he's coming in quick. Yeah, Mark Murphy, very, very impressive start to the race. 12th up to now, fourth place. Down the back stretch. Oster's got his hands full. Mark Murphy is through on the outside. And by the way, uh, none of those drivers that have pit have actually even made a pass yet, so I, I think I'm with you, Finney. I don't think that that was really worth uh, a tire set nor uh, the risk that it puts you in. Yeah, that's a big thing too, right? Because that's one less tire set they got to work with. They only got a uh, handful. Oh, actually, they do have unlimited tire sets in this, in this series, so never mind. They, they well, can have as many to go around, but the issue is it does still put you back in traffic. Look at Mark Murphy just driving up to the outside of Trano. This car is fast tonight. But now what? <laughs> <laughs> You've got it up there. Now you're facing all the clean air slowing you down up to the front of the order. So he's got to get really creative with the moves here. Some may argue he might not have to make too many moves, but he's going to definitely try to go for it here. Going to go to the inside of Trainer went Whoa. high in three and four, almost making wheel wheel contact in three and four. That was a gut check moment, and he's going to go right to the outside. He's not wasting that run. He's going to drive up to the outside of Orman has got a missile today. Really does. Slipstream battle down the back straightaway. Orman going defensive on the inside. Murphy going to go around the outside. We'll try to look there. Tucks back in line trying to get some sort of slipstream over speed ahead. And they've left Trano in the dust. I mean, it's only been a lap and they've left him half a second back. That's really impressive for both of these cars. Jacob Oster has also caught Trano. He's going to drop to the bottom and look for third place. Christian Steele and Joshua Tucker, they battled before, they'll do it again. And then behind them, Akabueze and Altena side by side. Lots of battles here up inside the top 10. Yeah, really love to see you doing Altena. I haven't mentioned him a whole lot tonight. He's up to ninth. Taking a look at the lead though. Mark Murphy still working in the outside of Orman. And the driver giving up. Holds even entering the corner, but I don't think he's got enough exiting to fully take advantage of it. But watch him drive in here hard on the outside. Orman's going to stay on that white line. Murphy has to go up the racetrack just a little bit. It kind of kills the momentum leaving the corner. And behind them, uh, Justin Tucker's got past Christian Steele up for fifth. Ultimately, he was able to work around Akwaze, who's still under attack. Hello, three wide. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's Adam Blocker finally working inside the top ten. Oh, there he is. 26th to 10th, and he's still on the uh, the uh, first pit stop from lap number 16. And again, those drivers that pit have not made up any ground. There's Robert Maletska back here in 17th, but he's actually not even really putting any pressure on Rashad Craig either, so it seems to be a blunder, but maybe it'll come back uh, a little bit later. Yeah, I'm wondering if maybe he's trying to hit a fuel number, assuming that this race is going to go green all the way. It's a big, big uh, bet to place. I, mean, I, I feel like these guys can definitely go green all the way, but there's still that chance, especially with how these guys are fighting up here near the front. They're fighting pretty hard. Brandon Trainer, who's come back at them now. He's able to dispose of Jacob Oster in behind. He's put a little bit of 
gap back to fourth. Mark Murphy leads his first lap. Oh, car on the wall, the back straightaway hard. Seb Alexander. Uh, I'm not honestly too surprised when that caution is going to be out. And Seb Alexander, is part, parts of that car scattered all over the back straightaway. I saw him a couple laps before he tagged the wall, tapped the wall out of turn two. He was really struggling with that car with off the corner and that unfortunately that time couldn't save it. Yeah, it, it just it, this one was probably caused by understeer and then on exit. Here it looks Yeah. It just kind of starts that death wiggle. It just doesn't have stability in it. And it walked away from him and then he hit that wall hard. There's uh some steel that had a view of it all. Now what? Hit stops, and do you think Hit that stops. second group is going to stay out? Uh, we shall see. I feel like that might be a better move, but uh, no. it's kind of tough because, again, they're just about close to halfway in their fuel run, so it doesn't make sense to really stay out. So they're kind of forced to come back in. So I guess you can kind of argue that probably didn't not the best move for Malechko, putting it back down the order. Yeah, it just puts you... Oh, it still it, has... Sorry, I saw it. Uh, I think it was blocker pop back out. It just puts you in harm's way. I don't. I don't necessarily love doing that. This early. In the, I mean, I don't know. It's experiment time, right? You mess up yep. now, and it's not going to hurt you. But you just have to be aware that cars around you are having problems, and you don't want to get caught up in theirs. Quick pit stops too. Under eight seconds. No major shakeups on the pit lane. Everyone kind of came out as they went in. Does reshuffle the deck though. Only 24 cars are running, 21 on the lead lap. Yeah, got him. those that are uh, a couple laps down, Don Silva, three laps down, he's actually going to get away by this time. So he will be back uh, three, so he will be three laps down. He was four. Uh, Lorenzo Bonner, he'll also get another lap back, so he's down to four, which is correct. And Paulo Venetia, he's 17 laps out down. He's I think, actually just getting back out, out there on the track. There is Silva and Bonder. They're going to take that wave around like you suggested. Paulo Vinicius in the number 142. These two are teammates based on the livery here. Yeah, I would assume so. Unfortunately, not the best run for that team. Struggling down 23rd. We'd be hoping for better, but there's still quite a bit of racing left to go. There's a chance that Silva could get back on the lead lap. Laps of the high range for the lap race, so change is always there depending on how things play out. Well, here's what I will say is that uh, Esper Orman has been the dominant force so far. 33 of the 42 laps have been led by the 53 car. And Brandon Trano did lead a couple of laps, but his, his car seems to run pretty well in trail, but it doesn't seem like it's really able to get and keep the lead very easily. So maybe there's an adjustment they can do to get that thing a little bit cleaner, trimmed out in uh, clean air. But uh, I'll tell you, that 53 has just been rock solid up front. Uh, do you want to guess, without looking at the stat sheet, off the top of your head, how many pull positions Brandon Drina has this season? We're 13 rounds in, 13. No, no he's not that good. Oh, okay. I mean, he's good, he's not that good. Uh, 11? Eight. Yes. And he's also won eight races. Yes. Is it true that he's won every race he started on Poland? Uh, no. Almost. <laughs> uh, let's see. The, he, every race that he has started on pole, he, except for one, he finished second. And another, he finished sixth. <laughs> Darn. So. <laughs> well, lights will be off on the pace car this time through. We'll be coming to the restart next time. Bye. We've got about, uh, well, about 140 laps remaining. And I assume at some point this race is going to get into that rhythm that we anticipate. And when you do that, the laps are going to click off pretty quickly. But uh, we haven't really had to experience green flag pit stops or any kind of strategy so far besides drivers uh, coming in for six lap fresher Firestones, which didn't really seem to do much. So we'll keep our eye on the tire wear and things of, of the sort, but it doesn't really seem to be a winning strategy so far.
It definitely does, and I think you know, that track position is something worth it. It is definitely possible to make up some ground, make some moves, but you know, there's only so much you can do out there on the racetrack, so I think you're definitely going to want to have the track position when it does come around. Seb Alexander is going to call it a night. And the 49 is done for the evening. So is Musselman, Christensen, and obviously Brian Carey, who did a start and part. Everyone up running high, getting ready for the restart. Foreman leading the field back down. Mark Murphy sitting in second place. Has a chance of getting the lead here. Depending on how things play out. Oh, though. So Orman immediately going back here. Bring back again here in Texas. Lap 44 back underway. And Orman not waiting around for anybody. Oh, and, and Trano not waiting around for anyone. Immediately dives the inside of Murphy, catching him sleeping in turn one. Yeah, Mark Murphy's been really good a couple laps in, but it, it seems like the initial restart, maybe that nine uh, shoots off the top a little bit better. So move the nine back up to second place. He's going to run mid-track here in three and four. That's interesting. Fully not up to speed yet and uh, not electing for the bottom of the road. And they come back up. Big Whoa. dive from training the inside of Orman, trying to make a move. Not going to quite work. Uh, it's too tight of a corner, too flat down there, and he's going to have to back out of it. <laughs> that was a scary dive there. These guys are just surprising each other with these big sends down in, in three. And, and I think you can get away with that on lap 45, but on lap 145, I think that'll be a crash. Across the start-finish line, lap 45 is complete. Here comes Trano again to the outside, this time trying the right. Look at the outside, the issue is you need to try to get that run off the corner, but not to be able to be established alongside, and actually doesn't get that much better of a run. Going to race with Orman down to the white line. There's Mark Murphy looking up high in three and four. Yeah, these guys are playing chicken at a 220 miles an hour on the back straightaway. Murphy again is going to try to squeeze up to the outside. Trano tries to shut the door. He will, but I don't think Murphy's going to appreciate that. This is getting raunchy up front here. I did not expect them to be getting this hard after it here early on. We're definitely starting to go at it here. Fairly, what I would say is fairly early on in this race. Look at Murphy to the inside late in turn four. They are just finding any place to put this IR-18, and they're going for it. Saw the door open, immediately going to use the momentum to shoot to the outside of Orman, get that clean air, maybe build up a run onto the back straightaway. He'll get a great run, well, really great run out of turn two. He's going to be high in three and four. And it cuts down. Watch that. He just turns left, pulls back into the slipstream here. And that seems to be getting him a nice jet of speed on exit. Issues though, the inside lane is always, you know, usually nine times out of ten the preferred way around these speedway tracks. Brought it right on board, Joshua Tucker, who rolled the battling, has come into the fray and immediately going to make a move to the inside of Trano. Eleventh up to third for Joshua Tucker. And interesting that Mark also started on the same row, row six. Both of them now are second and third. And continue to move forward. The driver continue to move forward. Adam Walker up to six. I think we were expecting him to get here. It was just a matter of time. Murphy again up to the outside. Having a look for the lead here. Lap 50 is complete. And over a quarter of the way through this race. So a lot of left to go. Tucker getting a lot of dirty air on the high side back to back off. Lose a lot of time to Murphy. Again, look at Orman's line into turn three. It just cuts down. He turns at the entrance to the corner instead of arcing it in for the apex because you've got enough grip where you don't need necessarily need to arc it in. And he's just defending that way. People are having a hard time slipping the car down the inside, but when they do, it gets very dicey because he commits so early to the corner. Absolutely, and you, you can, using the grip that this car has available, and you got to block off that line, otherwise people are going to make a pass. And the team drivers aren't afraid to make that dive. Looking a little bit further back, this is Stouffer versus Andreas Eich for 12th place. Watch Stouffer here out of turn two. Green car. Get a little bit loose, who the wall? That car is really tight inside to get off the first two. Mark Murphy again continues his assault on the outside. 
of Jesper Orman. They're just clicking away laps now. Picking him up, putting him down. Uh, Tucker also close in behind. I think they're not quite able to get as close as he can to his top two. He's kind of stuck back there in third. So how long do you play this game for if you're Mark Murphy? Running slightly out of line, kind of leaving yourself vulnerable to third and fourth place. Do you just continue to run this upper groove and just hope that Orman makes a mistake, or do you have to try something different at some point? I mean, it depends what he's looking at, because you're right, we've still got a lot of racing left to go. Thank you. We can play pit stops ahead, so there's still a lot left on the table. Do you want to push now? Potentially wreck yourself trying to make a move on Orman, or do you want to... Uh, try to make get that spot and get the lead. If he does try to get the lead, it's not guaranteed that Orman doesn't come back on him because that 53 car is looking strong up there. Uh, yeah, he just, again, he's led the most laps tonight by a, a long shot. He's very, very confident in where he's placing his car, and he can keep it stuck to the bottom of the racetrack. Uh, I don't know that he's the fastest car on the track, but he's definitely defending the best of everybody. A little racy back here as well as uh, Andreas Eich and Stouffer go back side by side at 12. If you go for a better run off of turn four, we'll edge ahead of Andreas Lightning well, for that spot. Oh, oh the Josh wall. Tucker in the wall. Oh, that's a decent amount of damage. Yeah, that'll be probably, if not race ending, at least run ending. That was a hard hit. Yeah, no meatball for him, but that's definitely going to damage the suspension. Yeah, just, it just pushes, pushes, pushes. By the time you realize, it's too late. Bam. Yeah, what, what really hurt him was uh, Trano cut across his nose as well. as coming out of the corner. He faced that dirty air. The car just could not grip up. So he's down on pit lane. Going to try to get repairs. Well, it's a really unfortunate for that car because it looked really strong. Yeah, a top five car for sure, at least in the early stages here. See if it uh, stays in the car. Looks like he will. So it just goes up on Jax as Mark Murphy again tries the upper groove into one and two find something. Oh, he scraped the wall out of two. Uh, actually, he did not. He got there with some ghost stuff. Uh, he kept off the wall, but he got very close. And I was just about to say, I think we're getting to the point where he started trying to get a little bit more worn out here. Approaching 20 laps in the run. Grip starting to go away. It's like when you get alongside someone on the outside, you're kind of trusting them that, that they're going to lift. And maybe there's a strength in that. If you can go up yeah. the outside of somebody and make them lift, or, uh, alternatively, they don't end up in the fence, but I mean, I think that's what worth a try. Also doesn't help is the fact that it is currently 113 degrees on the track. Very nice. It's 45 degrees Celsius. It's getting a little bit more slick out there. The tires are getting worn out on this run, so less grip in general. Something drives, drives, drives out there just to. It's still pretty early in the afternoon. Oh, it's going to get a lot hotter, too. It's going to... Uh, we're definitely not going to get any of that, but 4 p.m. on the track is going to be 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh. About 2 degrees plus centigrade. The field now is spreading out and clicking laps away. Rob Malechka in the 91. Fifth in the standings coming into the night. Started this race eighth. Drove up to the lead early on, and then it was a pit stop on the second caution of the night that put him back in traffic. He is still recovering from that. So he's definitely undoing some of the early work, but uh, I think that car is pretty strong. It, it just seems like it was better up in the front than it is P11. Oh, it definitely was. And I think we can definitely expect him to get there as well. He battled Julian Alton versus Adam Blocker, battle for fourth place. Blue car versus blue car. Alton in the 11, and a blocker in the 74. Documented Adams starts this season just, uh, how many of them? Seven of them and six of them top fives. And he is in a top five position right now. A little bit of scrapping between Akaboise, Marquez, and Andreas Ike, who's going to sneak down the inside of the 76. He'd like the spot, or two maybe, from the pink cars. The tight battle for positioning here. Ike trying to work his way up to the order with his pass scoper. Now up to nine. Receiving at eight. Away from Hamilton on poison. All the while, Orman's putting some distance on Mark Murphy. Four tenths of a second is the differential, and that is growing. He has just been very, very strong. 57 laps led in this race. And 
at the rate this is going, if he could get to, what would it be, like lap 96 or so? Yeah. Uh, that would be enough to clinch the most laps left. You know, actually looking at uh, Ford out around lap 80, I think we're going to start seeing these guys come down for pit stops. Around another 15 laps or so, it's like these guys down on pit lane. So you better hope you practice that. <laughs> Now, I guess there is some solace in that these cars have a little bit of downforce and their brakes are pretty good. It's not like you're driving a stock car around Talladega, but I always find the hardest thing is the transition off of the uh, the banking to the apron, not only just keeping the car straight, but also avoiding damage to wings and things. I think that's a consideration as well, is the fragility of some of these components. You do have to remember these guys are going to be approaching pit lane at 250 miles an hour. So, <laughs> yeah. so they're going to be demanding a lot out of those slinky better ones. Adam Blocker, one of the biggest movers in this race. Julian Altina has been quietly lingering up here in the top 10, but we haven't really talked a lot about him today until now. He has had a pretty quiet run, uh, slowly moving up the order, and then was actually able to get past Blocker from one of the few clubs I've uh, been able to see. Get past the 74 tonight, because he's been usually just getting fast forward. Look, it's a great run out of turn two on the back straightaway. I'm not sure he's going to be able to clear the 11 of Altana. Not quite, but we've got a decent off the corner and actually will clear in the middle of three and four. Mark Murphy and Brennan Trano, they were side by side into turn three. And they are now a full second behind Jesper Orman. This is a stage where if you're Orman, you're liking what you're seeing because uh, you're growing this gap a couple tenths of a second a lap. We've got a long way to go. We're in the middle of a green flag run. We could go green for a long time. You're going to have a lot of control over this race if it goes green to the end, but Trano sends it down the inside of Murphy, takes the spot. Yeah, I think if I, unless I miss it over the race, it sounds like they almost planned that, I think, for Trano to get up ahead and say, all right, well, you're looking a little bit faster. You go up ahead and get him. I'll just kind of ride your coattails a little bit. Looks like Murphy, he's starting to struggle here in this uh, second part of the run. Yeah, uh, we'll see what Trano's got as far as lap times are concerned. Uh, last lap is on the left-hand side of the screen. It was a 24.814 for Orman and a 24.917 for Trano, so still a tenth quicker. Now that Trano's got the pass complete, though, we'll see if it starts to swing the other way. Christian Skill under second. Orman hit with an employee and Andreas Pate in front of work past him. Not quite sure if anything changed for the high uh, 5 driver, but dropping down the order a little bit. Just slot himself in front of Andreas Pate. Foreman was quicker again by a tenth and expands to a second and a half. Maria Syke is still side by side with Steele. Steele just pulls ahead. And Rob Malechka back up to tenth now. He's about a second and a half back from these two. And while they fight, he is closing in about two tenths a lap. Okay, I have been having a pretty solid flying forward in this race. And now we're looking inside, but you can see these guys getting a lot. They will get on the throttle a lot earlier in the run, but now they're having to back off a lot more. Fastest car on the racetrack last time was still the 53. I'm surprised there. He's got clean air to work with, and we're at the point where the slipstream is not really helping you a whole lot. It's just going to be been hurting you now because of the dirty air. The gap has separated almost a second for the drivers up in the front. Tony Shaw is going to take him three wide off into three. He's right behind right Forsyth and David Adams. That's a good little scrap here for 13th. The drivers all flying in formation there for a moment. Forsyth, David Adams, they're going to be side by side out the corner. Great run for Adams around Forsyth, and around he will go to 13th. And just ahead of them, Andrew Marquez Whoa. and David Adams. Marquez is a bit of a slip up on the end of turn four. Car got a little bit loose. And right back to this one, Shawan and Greg Forsyth. They're just back and forth. Whoa, big push by Shawan. Way up the racetrack. They're both in the fence. Maybe Shawan missed it, but Forsyth hit it pretty hard. Yeah, I think Shawan was able to get away with it. Forsyth not so much. He took a decent look to the wall. 
going to continue out there. He's going to continue regardless. Feels it's not worth coming down pit lane just yet. It's like hitting the fence at Darlington. You don't do it for almost the entire race, and the second you hit it, it's like, all right, now I'm going to hit this wall every lap for the rest of the night. <laughs> it is so frustrating. And look at the action kicking off behind Julian Altina here. This is for fifth place. And uh, that's a lap that's car a lap actually car. going through. That is John Solo working through. He's come down to pit lane, I think, recently. So he's back out there with pressure tires. And Hamilton Aquilese, he's not on fresh tires. He's just quicker. We'll get past Julian Altima. Where, where did he come from? He was not necessarily uh, going the right direction in the first couple of runs of the race, but give him some time in laps. But he's beginning to find his own here. Last time by, he was only two tenths off the leader. It was the third fastest car on the racetrack. That time through, he was the second fastest car on the racetrack. It looks like his car is configured a lot better for the second run of this race. Either that or he's made some really good in-car adjustments to really get uh, attracting these conditions. Either way, that car is set up at the moment to be pretty quick in the second part of the run, although it's not going to last long because a couple guys are already coming in, too, and also going to be one of the first drivers down on the pit lane. Lap 81 of 184. As Akadoise and uh, Blocker still fight for P4. Altona seems to be the only one on pit road of the pack this time through. Boy's going to blow past the outside out of Blocker. And up he will go to fourth place. So if you're Jesper Orman, what's your strategy here? Lap time-wise, you're about a half a second off. So are you just going to stay out as long as you can and wait for everyone to force your hand? Oh, I mean, you're definitely going to stay out as long as you can, although, again, these drivers can't really stay out that much longer. I think it'll be an extra three or four laps. We have a couple of caution laps to each uh, estimates, but a couple more. And, and here comes Andy the leader. Marquez. And there's the leader, Orman down. A couple more coming down. There's Trano coming down to pit lane as well. It's going to start getting a lot more busy. Mark Murphy also down 69. Valetska's going to stay out. And it looks like Andrew Marquez, David Adams are going to come into pit road and maybe a few others. But it's a much busier place this time than it was last. Uh, Jacob Oster had a blocker by the side by side. Whoa! Whoa! Blocker just cutting him the nose off of... Oscar and Hamilton Aquaways are coming out just in front of them. He's coming down to block him to lead this race and lead his first lap of the night. Oscar way up the hill. He's now, struggling with that 16. And now they're going to have issues. You know, you can't just uh, necessarily think you're going to get clear racetrack. It could be challenging to get to pit lane with a lot of these fast cars uh, leaving pit road. You could get yourself caught in a bad scenario. 100 laps to go, though as we trek towards halfway in this race. Big smoke cloud down there at turn one. And I think everyone's all right, but that was kind of spooky. Not much sure if someone's let it out going down, uh, coming out of pit lane. So I think everyone's good. See anyone with issues, potentially. And Oster and Andreas Oh, Hike. caution. Uh, whoa. And Oster bails. Dan Ench is the caution. Oster took a hard right because he did not want to go to pit lane with the caution out. Oh, he was just trying to get out of the way and got up on the apron and spun and, oh, is that Trano? Yes. Oh, yeah, it's it was. It's the points leader. And that car is junk. So uh, what are the implications are... of this for, I mean, he's 86 points ahead in the championship. Well, there are three drop weeks for these right uh, for the, this leak. So, I mean, he's going to close, uh, the drivers of mine are going to close up, but this is, I think, going to be one of Trano's drop weeks, unfortunately. That thing is absolutely destroyed. Yeah, and so. Might end his night early, and Oster yeah, this time. Right. By the way, pretty clutch what Jacob Oster did. Let's go back and watch. Uh, as he was coming to pit lane. Watch the onboard the Team I-5G driver here. Crash is going to be behind him. But keep an eye for the lights on the wall as he comes down to pit road. Watch the pit lane entry light. Right there. Red sees it, takes the right before the commitment line, and escaped. Very, very quick thinking. Yeah, really great job of him thinking through that and getting on through, making sure he doesn't get a penalty. He is leading the race still.
I don't want to say that we've had a lot of attrition, but we haven't had a little bit. Got about a half a dozen cars that are out or crashed with various ailments. We are just nearing the halfway point of this race. That was a pretty long green flag run, though. That was uh, that lap 57 to 86. Yeah, just about. Everyone has just come to pit lane, at least everyone in the top 10. Because they were the ones that had yet to stop. And there will be a lot of wave around cars. There's a lot of drivers trapped between Oster and Pace Car. This changes a lot. Yep. As uh, Darrell Waltrip would say, this changes everything. One of the most competitive cars in the race is currently sitting out. And for a lot of these other drivers, especially those competing in the championship with them, the opportunity is open up to get some really solid points against them to get that much closer. Lorenzo Bonder, four laps down, but might use this opportunity to get a couple of laps back. It hasn't gone totally to plan or totally smoothly just yet, but trudging along and, and Finney, the best thing you can do is just keep your head in it and keep moving forward, right? So uh, P21 for the 37 right now, they're starting 28th, so at least it's a positive direction, even though it's, it started with two unlucky moments uh, in the first couple of yellows of the day. Yeah, unfortunately, we'll be able to get a lap back. Well, oh, Way everything cycled out. Try so. to will it into existence and it didn't work. <laughs> and a reminder for those interested in the Toyota GR Cup North America Esports League, if you'd like to participate in uh, a great series with a fantastic race car, uh, Toyota GR Cup, uh, they are running an official esports series with SRO Motorsports America that uh, Finning and I will be operating behind the scenes. I'll be broadcasting and announcing. Finning will be race control and that will kick off on march 30th but you still have one day left of qualifying you can head to iRacing's time attack function in the ui and lay down a lap time at circuit of the americas and at sonoma those sometimes will be your qualifying effort and the top 40 north american entries will be invited to, do, to participate for over ten thousand dollars in prizing uh, so make sure you get that qualifying out of the way if you'd like to be participating in that very exciting stuff uh, as uh, we get the one to green and a lot of wave around cars here. Yeah. Oh, sorry, actually, so uh, a couple of those guys will get the lap back. I, I forgot that there were a lot of wave around, but Jacob Oster will lead the field back to green. Adam Blocker, Rob, Rob Malachko, he's back in yeah. third place after all, every, after everything said and done. Andreas Pike, Christian Steele. Uh, so the field completely reshuffled with this caution. The racing gods taketh. Racing gods giveth. Yeah, he's got to hope they don't take it again. <laughs> <laughs> Power slide number 91. That had an interesting day. Started in eighth, drove up to the lead in the first three or four laps, led a couple of laps up front. Uh, a couple of pit stop decisions later, ended up all the way down in 18th place. Dodged and weaved through all the accidents that have happened since. And now we'll restart in third place. Little bottom of the racetrack here, though. Interesting line as we will restart on lap number 90. It's a bit interesting because typically everyone runs up high because once the uh, green is out, you can pass on the outside. There you go, shifting back up right towards the end here. Get back going green. Three laps shy of halfway, and look at Christian Steele, and we're going to be three wide back here, Jesper Orman. Almost got middle, but they did not get going behind the, uh, what car is that there? One, uh, you get a great, great look at it. One of the red cars. That was uh, Gary Bummer that was struggling to get up to speed. I thought he was checking to get back. This is making me nervous. Three wide into turn three. Oh, Andrew Wood had to bobble it. He's still middle three out of four. It was sorted out. I think a couple cars either uh, running a little bit slow or just trying to get out of the way. Everyone's trying to organize themselves here in the restart. This is where it gets really tight. It's a big chance where a caution could fly. That's yeah, pretty tidy up front. This is where everything is swirling down the drain. And Tony Shawin has got a busy group of cars in the rear view right now. Up to the lead, Adam Blocker taking the lead away from Jacob Oster. And 74 car will be back in the lead. Up, I think, one or two laps uh, 
uh, under the green flag cycling of pit stops and will now control a race without anything taking it away from him as we get the moment, except for Jacob Austin, who's from Robert Lunchka, in behind in third. Christian Steele and Rashad Craig, remember that 21, got rear-ended for the first yellow of the day. He's managed to rebound up to sixth place, so he's had a pretty good night after that incident. And solid recovery for him. Trying to work through the order. A couple guys near the back see the end of the way. Trying to make some way on through, but Mark Murphy making their way through through him up to 10th. Yeah, he's going to be. But he and Malechka basically just switched positions. Uh, you know, third for one and 10th for the other. And then that caution happened at the wrong time and flipped the script a little bit. So he's got work to do, but he has been so, so fast. Uh, but he wasn't as fast as. Uh, as the leader earlier in this run, Jesper Orman was just lights out on two, two seconds clear of the field. But now yeah, he's I got to pass cars for the first time tonight. Murphy's car really saw struggle once it got later in the run. I think Murphy's car is definitely a short run car in the first 20 laps. Uh, the next uh, 20, not as good. But that short stint Murphy's got a very, very strong car. Looking at Rayshaw Craig, he's making, trying to make some moves on Christian Steele. Battle for a fifth place between these two. Borman passed Forsythe for seventh place. And man, that was a little tight out of turn four. There's Joe Branch in the 28, making a pass on Mark Murphy. We haven't really talked about Joe at all tonight. The Atlas 317 car, and he's going to lose that spot right back. He's had a relatively quiet race, Joe Branch, in the middle of the field. And of course, we get relegated one spot as Murphy works around him. Up ahead, Rayshaw, Greg Christian Steele there, changing positions in the middle of three and four. Yeah, Altona now will take the opportunity to go around the outside of Branch. And Hamilton Akaboyze is watching, then right back to Steele and Rashad Craig as uh, Jesper Orman splits the difference between those two, and he's coming quick down to the bottom for fifth. Yeah, he's wasting no time. He wants to get that spot, that lead spot back immediately. All right, as soon as he can get it, get to it back inside the top five now. Yeah, something tells me. And it, might be my eyes that the 53 is the best car out here tonight he is just i mean yes the fastest uh you know maybe not as far as best overall lap but when, once he got the lead he just never looked back and he's carving through traffic pretty easily now Hamilton Akwoeze and joe branch fight for 11th yeah we typically see that you know some drivers will set up a car and run a little bit better including the air when they're near the front other drivers better when they're running back in the pack Orman, his car seems to be good everywhere, and yeah, you can maybe even add Mark Murphy to that list. So they, that car went, that 53 car does get up there. I'll be scared from the top four that keeps coming in there quick. Let's look at Hamilton on Blazing, working on the back of the field in They will kind of slowly trudging through to the front of the field. Yeah, we're past halfway, but we do have a lot of racing left to go, so I'm not counting Orman out just yet. We still have another pit stop or two to complete. And uh, lots, lots left to sort out. I mean, the cautions have been happening at you know pretty unpredictable times. That that one with Dan Ench came up completely out of the blue. So we'll see if we can get green to the end or if there'll be a couple more yellows to shake things up along the way. Adam Blocker leads, though, over Oster, Malechka, Ike, and Orman. Still trying to defend off of Mark Murphy. Murphy will go to the inside. Big dive in turn three. He will skate on through fast steel. That'll get him back to eight. One more spot for Mark Murphy trying to make his climb forward. He's trying to chase down Orman. He's got two seconds ahead of him. Murphy used this upper groove here. He's found some speed. I've actually been really interested to see that that turns one and two, which is sometimes pretty single groove, especially in stock cars. Uh, drivers have found a way to use the middle groove to great effect here tonight. And three and four actually seems to be the harder turn to pass in of all places. Yeah, I think that's just due to the banking room. That's very much uh, bottom feeding for these drivers there. He's putting his way around the bottom, maybe. He'll get that run off the uh, uh, middle lane by running a little bit of an offset. So I think that's where we're seeing that. A lot of drivers trying to easier make some progress in the other half of the track. Speaking of progress, and we're not closing up past Craig Forsythe. Altona trying to do the same contact almost off the turn. Four. I think they did touch, actually. It was slight, but I'm pretty sure that there was some contact. Here it is down into turn three. Watch the 
99. Here comes the 11 right there. A wake you up. Open to grab the spot. <laughs> Robin Dries. <laughs> I don't think that applies to open the open. <laughs> like Ross Chastain enters the IndyCar series, he'd be snow dog. What's like that? Yeah, a lot of wrecked race cars. Yeah. <laughs> These are not already. No, Ross, it's not a battering ram, it's a race car. <laughs> Roman, but uh, play his next victim on the back of the side. Yeah, he's just a man on a mission to reclaim what was stolen from him uh, back at lap 86. Now, uh, we should mention we're 23 laps in the run for Orman, 19 for most of the other drivers in the front here. Uh, we are very quickly clipping laps away under these green flag conditions. And what that means is we're about half an hour from the checkered flag of this race. So. If I'm uh, Jesper Orman, I'm starting to think about how I'm going to get to the end here. Looking down at my numbers, I've got four laps uh, less fuel than those around me. So I have to consider that when, uh, when making your strategy here. Here's uh, laps led, but then here's the more interesting thing, stint. 21 laps for most of the field, 25 for Orman. Yeah, and I think for it, it might be more interesting than it seems. But I'm trying to like look at their numbers. I don't... I think they're all they're all gonna have to make some more stops in this race. I was thinking there might be a chance it can be one stop, but a little bit too far out there unless we get another caution near the middle to uh, you know, make it a little bit longer. But they are all I think gonna have to make two stops. And the question is, when are they gonna make their two stops? Yeah, that's it. I mean, we saw what happened last time. If can't know what's going to happen, and we saw the, a caution massively mix things up. And you have some time to recoup positions lost as Orman is going to squeeze by Ike out of turn four. Oh, that was very dangerous. Orman just got clunked by Ike into the wall. I, mean, I don't think Ike is, was thrilled about that either. No, I mean, Ike almost got put in the fence. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> so he drove off he was... into one pretty aggressively, not willing to give this up, especially after that. You know, we don't see Andreas like in that. No, I, I mean, I wouldn't even know what that would look like except right there. <laughs> I mean, I it, it takes a lot. I mean, Andreas likes angry as I'm going to drive into the corner on the outside of you and pass you again. <laughs> That's very clinical. <laughs> Love the color effects on the back of this car as well. Like it's glowing from the tailpipe, says Orman's going to try this one again, wind up and go for it. Grab a look in turns one and two to the high side. It's a little bit of a better run than Ike. Going to carry that down the back straighter to the inside. He won't look. And it should be a pretty textbook pass in turn three. And this time he'll have it with a little less drama than before. Ike will have to concede it for now. Six tenths up to Molechka. And Molechka, Oster, and Walker have been 3-2-1 uh, and one, basically since the restart. But now they're going to have pressure from behind in the form of uh, Jesper Orman. So you said two stops to the end. We're 26 laps in now. So are you thinking coming to the next 5-10, or what, what are we looking at here? I don't know. I feel like for the Jarvis, they might as well just kind of run it out. I don't think they're really going to save much on tires. I well, unless they're really running in that air, but I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of tough to tell you. I shouldn't really say that, actually. I think he might be worth coming down a little bit early just to get out of the dirty air. Yeah, just change the strategy. Fitting is Larry Mack if he's unsure. <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> Maybe. They could. Because, because there is the risk of uh, that caution coming out again, especially with the mixture of drivers on fresher tires, drivers <laughs> on the older tires. But, so you run that risk. You come in early, you may have a chance of getting caught up by the caution. You try to come in later, but optimally that might not be the best for tires are concerned. And here comes Orman with the run on Ike as they continue their battle for forward. Just imagining Fox cutting to Larry. Larry, what's our tire strategy for this race? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't been in a race car in 30 years. Hey, he's been a crew chief. He was a crew chief for one of the best <laughs> car drivers <laughs> the whole time for quite a few yeah, of those I years. Love Larry. Andreas Ike, man, this defense. Is, is very, very stout, and he's going to maintain fourth over Orman. 
Yeah, I wonder if Ike was planning on defending this horn with a secure no, leg. Because Orman <laughs> almost put him in the fence. I think he got used up, but he said, all right. <laughs> Rules of engagement have been laid out, and this is how I will race. Looking around uh, 15, about 10 to 15 laps left in the run. Mark Murphy actually down from the lane. But very early. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I, I like this because he's not going to win the race doing what he was doing before. So Yeah, the... The window, I should say, to you know make it uh, make those two stops, it definitely opened up. So I think Mark decided, you know what, I'm gonna throw caution to win here. It's probably something a little bit unorthodox. It's gonna come in early, to get that fresher air. I really noticed the uh, floor also. looking like a carrying handle <laughs> on the front, Which one? the front edge of the floor. Oh yeah, looks like it's because pick it up and carry there's, it. There's an insert that goes in there, I believe, on the road course as well. Out of blocker, leading a whole bunch of laps. This will be his 31st lap led. And Jesper Orman on pit lane early. He's led 74 yeah, so laps and is just about 10, 12 shy of uh, leading the most. So Mark Murphy, Julian Alton, and uh, Jesper, Jesper Orman in the 53 all down. So pit stop slowly getting underway here. So trickle driver down into pit lane. So you see now Mark Murphy, once he gets really up to speed, how his lap turns are going to look. Compared to Adam Walker up the front. I remember that Orman had three or four laps more on his tires than everybody else. He's 36 laps into his run. And we are, looks like, 64 laps from the checkers this time by. So 64 divided by two is 32. Adam Blocker has run 33 laps. I'd anticipate seeing a lot of drivers try to split this down the middle and uh, run two equal 32 lap chunks to the end. Yeah, actually, Mark Murphy took into the second faster than out of blocker last lap. Here. I mean, I, again, I, once you pass, like, it, it, this was going to be a three-run race to the end, assuming it goes green. Once you pass that even third mark, I think you're leaving performance on the table. For IndyCar, the the fall-off is a lot. I mean, what are we looking at, nine-tenths of a second? That's a lot of time. So I think if you split this race into three equal chunks, this being the end of the first chunk, I think there's legitimate speed to be had as compared to someone who's going to run it a little bit longer, like Adam Blocker. So we'll see how this pans out, but I like that call by Murphy and by oh, Jesper Orman. Right. He's only getting quicker. It's even five tenths of a second the gap, but the gap between their last lap time. So that 69 car is looking pretty quick, and for Blocker, he definitely can't see that kid unless he's watching the broadcast. And you can say it out loud because there's no way you can tell the moment his lap time's putting down because uh, a lot of the young drivers though are starting to come on down, trickling on down. Christopher down on pit lane. Andrew Marquez has come down to make his stop. Yeah, it's about, uh, about a third of the field has made their uh, second to last stop of the race. And lap times on the left-hand on the left -hand side of the screen for you to see. 25.092 for the leader. And for Mark Murphy at 24.704. Say they do seem to fall off quick and then kind of stabilize. But yeah, they, he was working through uh, getting past the cars. I think he got a little bit of boost from some switcher. Yeah, even Ormond's though it, uh, is at a 24.5, uh, which is still a couple tenths off. Uh, I guess that's a, that's pretty reasonable. Only two tenths off his best. So look at this: Andreas Syk and Jacob Oster. This is for third, and Hamilton Akaboyze way up top, looking forward as well. Yeah, remember, remember Hamilton Akaboyze was. Lightning fast in the last couple laps of last run. Same thing again here. I don't know what that car is set up for. It, it is weird because yeah, Aquaboys and Oscar from the same team, but I don't know what the way Aquaboys is just his driving style. He's looking a lot quicker than his team. He's got a big run looking to the outside now. It's like he lit the afterburners and that thing registered to SpaceX. Look at him go yeah. all the way to the high side and he's going to drive around Andreas <laughs> side. Holy cow. It, you know, uh, IndyCar has been Oscar. waiting to implement their push to pass their new push to pass with the hybrid system later in the year. It looks like Hamilton's ways not the ways already got it. Hitting that button and just zooming past some other drivers here. Uh, the thing is just on fire right now. Akaboyze up to third, 1.3 behind Robert Malechka. And Malechka's about a second behind Adam Blocker who has uh, dominated the second portion of this race. Tony Shawin's on pit lane. And now it's about half and half those who have pit versus those who have not. And they're all going to be coming down the next couple of laps, really pushing the edge of the fuel limit. So in the next three or so laps, we're going to see a lot of the drivers come on down in pit lane. Andrew Wood going to be one of them coming down from the front, down to service. Now they'll go into pit lane. 
Grace Ike, Jacob Oster, they're going to be side by side for fourth place. 41 laps on these tires. Just don't know. I mean, again, they're running some kind of overcut scenario here, but I don't necessarily like doing that in an open wheel car on an oval. Just tricky to pass, so I, we'll see. I mean, they have track position to play with, so they've got that on their side. Yeah, they definitely do. Thing is, so I, I mean, the other thing these guys could do is come to like run paints almost completely empty. The last, the last pit stop, come well, in, splash a few, and go. And 42 laps has got to be getting close, right? Here comes Adam Blocker. Yeah, so what it's looking like, I think they might be, they might be if they run uh, for drivers that may choose to do so. They all run the entirety of the second stint, and they'll come in with about 10 laps to go. Well, let's see all what. Need is the splash and dash. Here comes Robert Malechka on the pit lane, and Hamilton Akwaze who is running him down. Man, I, if Hamilton Akwaze could have an auxiliary fuel tank, he would love that because his car gets so good <laughs> at the end. He does, never wants that run to end. I, I was going to say he can dial his car in you know, somehow through uh, some which wizardry in the iris and setup. Uh, to get that car to turn on a little bit, like five, ten laps earlier, he would be a rocket ship for the entirety of the run. And here comes Andreas Seik, and Jacob Oster is going to stay out. I think for Oster, that is his seventh lap left. Christian Steele, Joe Branch, and Craig Forsythe, the only ones that are left. Forsythe just coming in. I hear Joe Branch calling that he is coming in. Christian Steele out there, Jacob Oster. I think Oster's coming in. Here he comes. Oster's in. Steele is going to stay out. Branch is coming in. And Jesper Orman is going to be ahead of Adam Blocker by 2.6 seconds. Adam Blocker last time by might have been in some traffic, but he was actually slower than Jesper Orman. He looked, I think he's just because he's dealing with all this traffic. But we're going to see what those fresher tires are really worth. It's about 11 lap difference between these two. It's going to get interesting as they go up and Mark Murphy, he's right in behind Blocker. I think what that car between them, but effectively right in behind Adam Blocker. Remember where Orman was running? He was back in, what, fifth? And he timed so, this. I got to say, actually, going back to the to around where Mark Murphy is, he's trying to work around Christian Steele. Christian Steele is hyper mile in this car. And one thing to point out, the Indy cars, they do have fuel maps, various fuel maps, typically one through five, uh, is, or what you got to play with. Five is what you use for when you're under caution, but it almost seems like that's what Christian Steele is running without the moment. He's really making this car go long. And I'm wondering, he's thinking he has a chance of making it on one stop to go easy. They can imagine doing this. Just yell out on Chatter is coming out of the pit lane now. I don't know. I don't think it's enough. He's coming. He's coming, but I don't know if he's got enough to make it the second stint. He's only got four. He's only done 48 laps. 50 they got laps. 50 to go. Yeah. And I think this is also including laps around under caution. So I don't quite think he's got enough. That's going to be tricky, but we'll see. I think you're going to give up a lot of time regardless trying to that strategy. But Jesper Orman from fifth to first played the, the pit strategy perfectly to take the lead. The question is for how long? Or does it even matter? Because could he, he could just pit, you know, really any time he wants in the next three or four laps. He'll still have the lead, Finian, and then he'll have his pit stops out of the way. I mean, I, I don't know that Jesper Orman could lose this race as long as he doesn't mess this up. Right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't think, I mean, it really comes down to it. it depends on how much uh, of a run blocker's going to have on it with the fresher tires. That really could be it, may not be it. It's kind of up in the air. And again, I'm curious to see for the guys that really ran the tank out, are they just going to run the tank out, come in, get fuel only, ignore the tires to gain an extra five to six seconds, but that might be all they need. It's just kind of, you know, kind of throw your hands up in the air. I'm like, I don't know, something will work. I don't know if Orman wants a yellow or doesn't want a yellow, but I, I do know that I think he's in a position of strength. He's got 1.8 seconds to burn. Uh, he's going to be within his fuel window effectively now. Uh, and then Adam Blocker uh, is going to be put in a, in a rock and hard place because Orman is going to pit and have better tires for the short term or 
he could go a little bit longer and stay right on Adams' heels and pit with him. So there's a lot of strengths to where Orman is at. And a lot, all, all this comes because he has the pace, Finian. Uh, he got buried back in traffic because of an ill-timed caution way back at lap uh, 86. And it has not held him back at all. Well, he hasn't here. He's uh, working through some lap traffic. Slowed him up a little bit. Walker now 1.5 seconds behind. Catching slowly but surely up to the 53. Yeah, again, the, 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 it's an 11 lap difference, though. So it's it's uh, a lot of difference. And Walker is going to catch him, I think. Or it, it, even if he doesn't, uh, it's going to, you know, it, 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 I think he's, Orman's still got an advantage here, at least in the short term. But at some point, Walker has to pit too. So there's Oster and Ike. This is a battle for sixth. We have to really widen now. Uh, now that we completed one set of flight like pit stops, and this is going to be a for a while longer. Got only 14 cars on the lead lap, spread across about 15 seconds. I think Orman would like to dispatch these lap cars. They're kind of just lingering behind him, which I think is not helping his cause. I think it actually is kind of helping his cause. Well, that Walker's yeah. get through. Walker does have to pass him now. I guess that's an inconvenient truth for him, huh? Walker's a little bit lucky to catch the tires a little bit fresher. That being said, those subscribe drivers also have fresh tires. The drivers are going to be down. But 42 to go. Now that's about the run that Walker did previously. I imagine that you're right. He'll probably run a lot longer in this run because he's only 13 laps in. So he'll probably go for another, what, 20, 25 laps minimum? Or I guess this is why there's been really two trains of thought here. You can either run the rest of this uh, stint in half, come in, get tired, or Bach can run it out, come in, just fuel, maybe two seconds of fuel, and come back out. They're only going to need about 10 extra laps of fuel to finish the race. But Orman's going to have to be a little bit more even as far as the, the tire and fuel strategy here. Yeah, but I think he's going to be coming in get a uh, full uh, fuel on the tires. I'd imagine he'll split it right around the halfway point of the run. It'll be about 10 laps from now, five, five, uh, yeah, five-ish to 10 laps from now. Or as soon as Blocker gets by him. Yeah, maybe he, uh, he ideally doesn't want to come in too early. So he wants to push this up a little bit longer. Now that they're, they're on lap 145, they can definitely make the end on one more stop. So that window is opened up officially now. Orman might not might want to push it another one say about five, seven laps. And of course there's the ever-present looming yellow on the horizon if someone were to make a mistake or cause an incident. But we've been green since lap 86, so it's been 60 laps since we've seen our last yellow flag. Yeah, I think really, you know, again, we see this in quite a few different series where once you make it past that first group, set of green flag pit stops and you complete the entire cycle, I think you're pretty, you're, the odds of a caution go down significantly. So it's still definitely there. There's still the chance, especially as they're working through some lap traffic. But I think a much lesser chance. I mean, there's a really good chance to go green in the end. So the guys are really going to be on their A game now. Make sure they you know, push the rest of the spin, nail the pit stop. Final picks up they have to make and they push like that. Uh, I'm looking at the points. Uh, Finney, can you tell me where Jesper Orman is? Is this his first and only start? Uh, yes. This is his first and only start. <laughs> Man, what a way to make a splash, huh? Yeah, I mean, he is pretty competitive in uh, the VOR uh, here, too. Uh, he's pretty good there. So I'm surprised to see him get up there and do pretty well for himself. Yeah, I just kind of block her. Probably going, who's this guy? <laughs> he was behind me, then he's in front of me, and I well, feel like I, I should. just heard him get off the throttle a lot out of turn. Yeah. Field, so I, I, I think yeah, he's probably running out of time. 30 laps into his run, so he, I think Blocker's going to get by him here, but I know, probably trigger Orman to come to pit lane, or maybe he'll wait a little longer, but battle for the lead is on. I don't know that Orman's got a lot to race with here down 11 laps on tires, but he's going to power through it and try to clear Blocker again out of turn two. Anything he can defend now is going to be beneficial as Blocker crosses him over into turn three. 
game, too. We're kind of let him get that into the lane. You know, it's a bit of a losing battle at this point. He's just got to kind of hang on for a little Whoa. bit longer as much as the car can get. Blocker loose on the exit of turn four on the bottom. Or we'll be back up on top in turn one. Yeah, he's going to try to rip the outside lane here. And, and this is hurting Blocker, too, because he's having to use up his Firestones on a battle he doesn't really need to do. And this is bringing Malechka into the fight as well from third. Actually, this is working out really well for him. Yeah. Better than I thought it was going to. I thought it was going to be Blocker blowing on by him, but he's still able to fight strong on the outside in the 53. This car's as worn up as I thought they were going to be, so he's going to continue up there, I guess, for as long as he can now. Yeah, 32 laps is the distance to the end from here, and Orman's completed ah, 33, so he's lost the lead, but now if he wants to cut this run evenly in half, he would pit this time. Or maybe he'll stay out here and fight a few more. I think he's going to do just that. I think he's going to do it because the more he fights with Blocker, the more it slows Blocker down, right? Yeah, so he might as well. Slows him down too, but... <laughs> well, yes, but, but you know, he, I would say he's got a slightly better strategy coming in for the tires, you know, a little bit earlier, but... I don't know, about to see. He's going to peel behind Blocker now. Still getting the fight there. Uh, Blocker's going to come up the road. Got to cut off the airflow to the nose of the 53. Little wiggle on a turn four. Oh, the laps are, oh, Malechka to the bottom. Where'd he come from? <laughs> he came out of nowhere. I wasn't even watching you. him. I was riding on board with Orman. He just blitzed through <laughs> these guys on the front straightaway. See you, nerds. Busy fighting with, with, with themselves. You guys have happy to battle you guys all day long. Here comes Blocker back to the bottom. He really came out of nowhere. He had a fantastic run for three and four uh, lap prior. And here comes Orman, just like that. Yeah. That perfect That's opportunity as well. Don't speed, though. Came in really hot. Uh, it doesn't look like he got any Ooh. penalty, so he's safe to go, but flirting with it. All right, so Maletska had an opportunity to flirt with Blocker there for a moment, but big understeer in turn two kept him from continuing that. All the while, Christian Steele and Chris Stouffer, we haven't really heard or seen a lot out of the 13 today, unfortunately. It's just been a midday for the 13, but he's up as high as he's been on P11. And he is actually calling already. He's coming down to pick lane. Uh, I'm actually surprised Mark Murphy has not come down pit lane because he was one of the leading drivers down in the previous stint. He's out there at the moment. He's getting close to his upper limit. Yeah, he, he didn't seem to have the pace that uh, Jesper Orman had naturally. Uh, he got it yeah. pretty early in the run in comparison, but I don't think he has the long run speed that uh, Orman has. I got to say also, too, Hamilton's not quite just in frame right there. Well, we've seen how wicked fast that car is towards the end of the run. Well, and we're getting there, 26 laps in, so this is really where he starts to pick up speed. How do I know that? Because he was the fastest car on the racetrack by nearly three-tenths of a second last time by. Yeah, I think once the field gets more spread out, this car really starts to come alive. It's when they're stuck in the pack, you know, on the short run, not really much coming for him. But now, like you mentioned, the, start, the car is starting to come a little bit more alive. Just kind of debating though, does he want to come in maybe a little bit early? Because I'm really curious to see what these guys are going to do. Guys like Blocker, Malachka, Akwaze, Oscar, Ike. Murphy's in, Alton is in, Joe Branch is in, John Silva is in, Akwaze again. It's that, that time the second Whoa, fastest. Oh, Blocker, a big dive on. I believe it's Stouffer. Yeah. Whoop, man, it's getting racy between these drivers, too, because Stouffer's on fresh tires, and Blocker does not need any funny business here because of the battle that he's got going on with Jesper Orman. Even though they're not next to each other on the racetrack, they might as well be. Now, Aaron Blocker is going to be in this lap. So not as I thought he would go longer than this. I think this plays right into Orman's hands here. Because any advantage Blocker would have had on a much newer set of tires is going to go away pretty quickly. Well, I guess he's, he's feeling you he have 10 laps and you're really losing out a lot. It's not worth staying out there. He might as well come in and get the fresh tires to run at least a little bit here. He's going to have 24 laps to put them to work. That's a conservative entry as well. Okay, so you want to make sure he wasn't speeding towards the end of this. He turns the lead back over to Robert Malechka. And Hamilton Akabueze. I wonder if that 107 is really the car to beat today. If this race goes bringing all the way to the end. That 107 is just he lost so But He was a lot of time prior, and he's coming on down to pit lane. Jesper Orman and Adam Blocker is leaving his box now. Here comes Jesper at speed. He will pass Adam Blocker. 
and he'll start adding seconds to the differential. 1.4, 1.7, 2.2, 2.5, 2.4, 2.7, 2.2, 2.5, 2.4, 2.7, 2.2, 2.4, 2.7, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 2.4, 
And he's running the short way around. You see how inside he was? Is he still trying his one-stop strategy here? I imagine he's got to be. Uh, I can't check the fuel map that he's running at the moment, unfortunately, but uh, I imagine one of the higher ones. And he's trying to see if he can push that ever so slightly up. He's running about half a tenth slower than everyone else uh, behind him. He's got cleaner to work with. So. And he's trying to see maybe he can stretch it. I think he maybe only go about five more laps at most. Updating you on Orman and Molechka now. It's because Blocker is dropped back behind the 91. It's two and a half seconds between Orman and Molechka. Molechka's got pretty clear road. Orman does not. not so much. <laughs> yeah, I say, uh, I saw him he was approaching a battle, and that battle's gotten even worse. It's three cards before now it's four. Uh, John Silva is a lot down. Andrew Wood, Andrew Marquez, uh, Andrew Branger will fight for positions. Not really what he needs. That got dicey ahead of him, too, didn't it? And it's going to allow Lechka and Walker to get ever so close. And we're going to say, please go. <laughs> please, please, sir. Because he's, I mean, assuming Steel runs out of fuel. I think, uh, which I think he is. Yeah, it's, it's only 1.6 seconds now. He doesn't, th this traffic is burning up a lot of the time that he needed. I honestly didn't think Malechka was going to have the, the pace or blocker, for that matter, to run him down from four seconds back, but they are making an admission to do so. There's only three minutes left in this race, though, by the way. It's, that's how close we are to the end. Second and a half, 1.2. So, well, Malechka loose, wrecking off return two, going to be spinning across oh. the track. The caution is out, and oh, my <laughs> collected Hamilton Akaboise there. Goodness. Well, that changes a lot. It does, and Christian Steele probably pumping his hands in the air because that's exactly what he needed. Wow. This is the lap prior. Let's see next time around. Was there contact? No, I don't think so. I think he just ran up the hill no, on he, his own. He just, got, he just got loose. I think he might have been pushing the car a little bit too hard, maybe on the weight jacker. Right there. And got loose. Heavy, heavy hit to the inside. Ooh, man. Knock boys, I did a nice job dodging and weaving there. Yeah, and that is really unfortunate because Vlachko is looking at gaining so many points on his other competitors. Yeah. Not going not gonna to happen today. That, that stinks so close to the end. Christian Steele, though, has to pit. He's coming to pit road. Yeah, he, he has to pit. I'm curious to see what the rest of these guys have planned for him staying out. I think. Oh, I'm talking ways. coming in. Oster Ike approaching pit lane. He is going to stay out. Murphy coming in. Alton coming in. Craig staying out. Ooh. Oh, this is going to get wild. So I have pretty much half of the leaders coming in, half of them staying out. And honestly, it's not its not that absurd to pit, really. We're going to get probably two or three laps. Yeah. Man, if I'm Jesper Orman, I'm not stoked because I think I would have rather run that out to the end under green. Yeah, he's got the older tires, Walker with fresher tires, and look at fresher as he go further down the order, right? You got Orman, 24 laps on his tires, Walker, 18, Ike, 13, Craig, 6, and then everyone else going to have a brand new, fresh set of fire stones. Yeah, I don't think Orman likes this, and he has really been the dominant force today. Uh, probably should have led more laps than this, but he is going to lead the most. I say should have, only because of the strategy that Christian Steele and some others were playing. Now I just gotta wonder who picked or who made the right call. <laughs> <sighs> I thought there was no way Orman was gonna lose this race after he got himself out in front with that undercut. But now he's kind of a sitting duck a little bit. I mean, you can get it all the best restart you want in the world, but you give them two or three laps of slipstream and six lap fresher tires, it, you're going to yeah. be in a bad spot. I believe we're at two degree. So I think we're going to get, what, three laps to go? Yeah. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I almost don't wonder if that might be not enough for the drivers on fresh tires. They might have enough to maybe make a pass or two. I don't know. Well, I, so 
here's how this plays out. So Rashad Craig is has got seven lap old tires, which are much fresher than those ahead of him. Right behind him, he's got Christian Steele, Hamilton Akaboyze, Jacob Oster, Mark Murphy, Julian Altona, and, uh, and Julian Altona, who have brand new fresh Firestones. I think Blocker and Ike are going to be all over Orman, basically a lap after the restart, if if not even the back straightaway. And as soon as they get two and three wide, they're going to be slowing up so much that I'm looking at Christian Steele and Akaboyze as drivers that could win this race if those front three or four battle. If Orman gets a nice clean getaway and, and is able to hold off Blocker for a lap or two, I don't think that they'll be able to make those passes. But if they're side by side, look how fast we saw Maletka pass people when they were side by side. He just blew by them like they were stopped. So that's their best chance is just to hope that those front three battle. Uh, hope and pray here as they work past to the start finish line should be one lap to green and two laps to go. Oh, Rashad Craig got rear-ended that first wreck of the day. Yeah, big, big recovery and still has a chance to gain a lot heading on this play zone. He's in a really good spot, actually. I think he would be in a much better spot if he didn't have five cars behind him with brand new tires, but he's got the second newest tires of the top ten. It, it, it could be worse. It could be a lot worse. So if you're Jesper Orman, how do you play this, Finny? I mean, we, we've seen double file restarts play out time and time and time again, but single file's a different animal. <laughs> Hit the gas pedal. <laughs> but there really isn't much you could do, right? I mean, you just gotta have to kind of hope and pray because you're gonna have three laps. It's enough. You know, typically two laps. It's, it's uh, two laps to go. The restart. It's a bit hard to get up to speed, make a move. Three laps. That extra lap does help a lot, especially with the car to get lined up to speed. The, the gaps close back in after the initial jump. So Orbit's just gotta kind of have to get going as soon as he can, and just kind of hope everything plays out in his favor. Well, up the older tires for him are gonna end there. It is a triple crown race, the final three laps, and we got no funny business. This race ends at the scheduled distance tonight, 184 laps in. The Catalyst 317 Indy Elite Series races next at Long Beach, but here goes Jasper Orman on defense. Three laps to go at Texas. Green flag. Everyone racing up the speed. Filing out into turn one. Walker trying to see if he can get a run on Orman. Washes out a little bit. Now going to go back in line on the back straightaway and going to go back up high to see if he can build up that run in three and four. Now the outside is where he's going to build that run, but look at Andreas Syke gathering it up. Christian Steele on brand new tires is up to fourth already. Two laps to go here from Texas. Was leading when the caution came out, leading that charge with the fresh Firestones. Nowhere to go, though. Going to just look to the outside of Andreas, like almost clipped him. He's going to be a little bit too high, still going to have to back off, lose a lot of momentum. Yeah, he had to back way off. Here comes Blocker to the middle here. Andreas Eich was going to look high. Orman still on the bottom trying to defend it. He spent the entire race carving back things he lost under a badly timed yellow. He's just got one lap left, a mile and a half left at Texas to cling to it here. Jesper Orman, here comes the two to the bottom. Oh, he's going to tap Orman out of the way, push him up high, and a big wreck. Huge wreck in turn one and two. It's the white flag. We're going to race this out. Christian Steele racing it down. Hamilton on Kablaze. Rayshon Craig in third. Oh, man. Checkered flag. Christian Steele wins at Texas. Hamilton on Kablaze second. Craig third. Murphy fourth. Alton of fifth. And a huge crash out of turn two. And that one. I'm sure will end in controversy. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, well, you know what we say, everything's bigger in Texas, including the controversies. <laughs> Door was open. But was it really? I mean, it's one of those things, right? You kind of have to judge it based off of the car racing. Yeah, that's. Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna say anything because you know we're the broadcasters. <laughs> Try to be impartial with it, but <laughs> I know how I feel I'm not about it. But... I'm not. Yeah, I was gonna say I know how I feel about it. <laughs> I don't know that I will share it, but no. Uh, what a mess! And for Jesper Orman, twelfth in that crash out of turn oh, two. Oh man, look at Jacob Oster also caught up in it. All the major players really caught up in there at the end. 
Yeah, there's Andreas Ike in it. Man, look at everyone parking all over the place trying to finish this thing. Gosh. Oh, there goes that camera. And Adam Blocker's perspective. You recall Finian a couple years ago in a very similar situation and a very similar result. I don't recall off the top of my head. Oh. Yeah, I mean, the two has a huge head of steam coming here. I mean, the door is open. So you, if you don't go, you're not going to win the race if you don't go for that hole. But yeah, it's uh, that's a tough one. Bam. Yeah, I mean, I mean, really, the the thing is though with these racks, you really have to view them at speed. <laughs> yes. Well, let's let's see and what happens at speed. Do that. Looks wide open there, doesn't it, Finian? It looks wide open. I mean, uh, I'm curious to see how the admins are going to view this. Me too. But. <laughs> We can't speculate, and not our job to. Let's take a look at the race results. I'm tapping out of that one. Yeah, here's a look at your race results. Christian Steele, I'm going to say these are unofficial. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's a very good statement to make. Uh, let's, let's call it, uh, yeah, unofficial. Christian Steele, Akaboeze, Rashad Craig, Mark Murphy, Julian Alton are your top five. How about Andrew Wood, sixth place there? Uh, in the number 64, then Chris Stouffer, Joe Branch, Andrew Marquez, and Adam Blocker, Finian. Yeah, you can bet that Adam Blocker, as well as the rest of the field, Jacob Oster, Orman, Andres, Ike, all going to be very disappointed with the way that finished after all racing up there for the top five and for the win. Craig Forsyth, the last driver on the lead lap to finish, and you got David Adams, John Silver, Silva, sorry, and Gary Lovern, Tony Shaw, and Robert Malechka down in 19th. What could have been for him a top three, and he not made the, had that rack. With just a couple laps remaining and Lorenzo Bonner in 20th. Well, let's look down at the rest of the order. And these are drivers that didn't have the day they were hoping for. Paul of uh, Vinicius, Dan Ench, Brandon Traino, points leader out with a crash. Josh Tucker, Seb Alexander, AJ Musselman, and John Christensen also out with a crash earlier in that one. Well, one of the drivers that had a, a nice night and actually rebounded to finish in fourth place was Mark Murphy in the number 69. Mark, you had a rocket ship tonight. And uh, up and down the order, uh, led a couple of laps. Weren't able to take it home tonight, but in all the chaos at the end, you did come home with the top five. Take us through your evening. Yeah, um, you know, all credit to Julian Altena and the, and the BOR group, uh, the Velocity Online Racing Team, Altena Autosport. What a what a fun car to drive that was. Uh, we had a had a ton of short run speed, not so much long run speed. Um, kind of decided to split the last uh, the last of the race in the thirds and it worked out for us um it was fun playing up the up at the front with them guys for a change um so i just just tickled pink and and i gotta get i gotta thank julian and, and our friends at race first and black magic designs and admin box little eagle racing um what a what a fun 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 night i, I passed steel early in the race and i said i got on a radio to julian i said i just passed christian steel and he said all right well jesper's next yeah, it was, it was fun to watch. And, and for me, you know, we haven't been here with the IES series in a couple of years because we've been gone for so long. Uh, but this racetrack, I don't remember it racing this wide. Turns one and two. That's supposed to be, I thought, single groove, but we're two and three wide over there. How was it to race tonight on this track? It sometimes isn't a fan favorite, but uh, tell me about your experience this evening. Man, I love it. I love this. I love this track because it has so many possibilities. There are an infinite number of lines in this car now, with with the setups being refined. And uh, you know, thankfully in iRacing, we don't have the we don't have the black goo at the top uh, that they put down for the NASCAR cars. So um, it's there's an infinite amount of lines up there, and there's grip, and uh, you can really, if you can make the high line work, you can go from the back to the front in a hurry. And, uh, that's that's what we did. And and I texted Julian before the race. I said, man, I'm gonna. They're gonna, you're going to have to rename me Harry after tonight because I'm just going to run the fence, and it worked. Well, Mark, it was a pleasure to watch a great race tonight from 12th back to 17th, up to the lead, and then to 4th. Bring the 69 car home in the top five. Congratulations. 
Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks for doing this. You have a great night. You here? Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Sir. And Hamilton Akaboeze comes home in second place in a barrage of uh, carbon and sparks and big crashes out of turn two. Uh, you come home in second place and avoid all the post-race drama. Uh, take us through your evening because you had a missile at the ends of the runs. It seemed like that car would just pick up 10 mile an hour when it was low on fuel. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, I was just... I felt like I was doing a really, really good job of tire saving that whole race, like being able to just stave on the bottom because no one was really even going to the bottom and then just rocket past everybody like and like way better tires. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm lucky I didn't get killed in that wreck. That was that was crazy. Kind of went through it a little bit. Luck on my side and yeah, ended up P2. Yeah, and as far as the championship is concerned, uh, you come into the night fourth in the standings. The driver that you were fighting closest was Robert Maleczka, but he had an incident late in the race, so uh, you actually gained a few spots as well on Oster because of his involvement in the collision. So what are the goals for the last couple races in the championship? Are you just going to try to squeak away that third place in the title? I'd love to get that third place. Also, keeping the one through four for I5G would probably be a big goal. But yeah, I'd love to get that third place from Jacob. And I mean, we're usually running around the same place, so it'll be interesting for sure. Hamilton, thanks for talking to us. Congratulations on a P2, and we'll see you next at Long Beach. Thank you. And Christian Steele put a fresh set of Firestones on, and you just lit the afterburners and down the inside in turns one and two and made it work. Take us through that restart. It was from a long ways back, and Finney didn't think you were going to be able to do it, but then you did it. Yeah, what a crazy end to the race there. Um, yeah, yeah, I was trying to make it on fuel there at the end of the race, and fortunately the caution came out a lap or two uh, too late for me to want to, you know, be able to make it to the end. Um, so yeah, I just I knew that I had a good car on the high side and you know I would have been able to make it stick and a lot of people kind of had to use up all the whole track so I was ready to rip the high side um Andreas had it pretty well covered entering one so I just decided okay if Andreas is going to go high then I got to go low and I saw a, you know a car with gap there at the bottom um you know I'm going going for for the win there and yeah uh just a really tough deal with Jester there you know he had a really good race so I feel I, I still feel bad about like the outcome um but you know like I, I really don't think I did anything wrong there I just tried to you know shoot the gap and you know I just don't think he saw me there and he started coming down and we, we had contact there so well, you managed to make it stick, and you went on to win the race, and it was your second win on the season. Uh, going back to uh, Worldwide Technology Raceway is where you got your other win just a couple weeks ago. Now, we have two road courses left and the Indianapolis uh, 500. What are the goals for the last couple rounds of the championship here? Brandon Trano had trouble tonight, but uh, it's going to take a lot uh, to be able to come out on top ahead of him. Yeah, obviously, Trano... Um is still the guy to beat on the road courses so i'd love to just get as competitive as i can with him and him and adam and and rob too uh i absolutely love long beach and barber so uh, i really can't um go wrong with that my goal is already to have fun pretty much i don't think uh the championship is really in the cards but um yeah it'll be a great end of the season and yeah it should be it should be a lot of fun well, winning is fun. You got your second one on the season, Christian. Congratulations. We'll see you at Long Beach in a few weeks. Yep. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right, Finian. Wow. Uh, didn't disappoint. Texas is a wild, wild racetrack, and this was a wild, wild night. But uh, one thing I did learn is that uh, you're, everyone's willing to lay it out on the line for a race win in this series because it is just so hard to get it done. We've only got one oval race left this season. It's at the Brickyard, of course, but two road courses until then. Long Beach in a couple weeks' time, and then Barber Motorsports Park. So uh, from muscling around and sending, you know, big sends, it now just turns into uh, clipping apexes and uh, and jumping rumble strips for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I was going to say, really interesting racing coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks, especially with Long Beach. I'd love to see the Indy cars run around there. It's such a great track to lap and also to race. We'll see how they perform. So.
Yeah, one of the next big races in the season. Yeah, that'll do it for us tonight here on Sim TV. Thanks for sticking with us. This was a, a seemed like a pretty short race when in, when you look at the laps, but uh, over two hours show tonight, and we've got more for you tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Full week here on Sim TV before we'll take a break for a little while. Texas is complete on to Long Beach on April seventh, then Barber April fourteenth and the 5th of May for the Indianapolis 500. Again, if you'd like to qualify for the Toyota GR Cup North America Esports League, one day remains. You've got to put in your time attack lap in the iRacing UI on Sonoma and Coda. If you want to be a part of that, you've got to be top 40 of the North American contestants. Thanks so much for everybody from watching the Catalyst 317 Indy Elite Series Triple Crown event from Texas. We'll see you next time here on SimTV.